Perfect. <laughs> uh, okay, Luis, I saw we had the same thought. Okay, yeah. so welcome yeah, everyone. We're now recording the Chaos Green More Lab Working Group meeting on October 1st, 2019. Welcome everyone. <laughs> Hello. We're just going through the last week and we had last week um, built out a common metric on commit hours and times and we looked at painless as one way to get the data, um, get the hour of day and the day of the week information from a date field. And we also looked at how to do it in Grimoire Lab ELK or ELK. Um, and there was a pull request to merge that in. I, as far as I remember, that pull request got merged, but let me take a look at this. Yep, it was merged. So we have the data now in the code base and with the next release and update of the dashboard, the data will be available and then we can uh, build out the visualization and dashboard natively. Mm -hmm. So Kirk, what do you think if we leave then as a task for the next week to work on the panel, so there is an agreement, and then we show perhaps how we can export and import panels or dashboards. Does it make sense? Yeah. So next week, action item next week is to build, uh, to show import and export of panels using the example of the common metric um, and hmm. So I think we have part of the agenda for the next week for the reason others, of course. So sorry about this one. Yep, perfect. So I guess then we are done and we can. <laughs> <laughs> um, Probably one of the things we can do for, for today then is, well, the roadmap. Santi's not here because I guess, as far as I remember, he's on vacation. Yep. Uh, so we don't have advances here. Uh, we model up news to be reflected in Chaos Weekly. Um, maybe Valerio or Alberto can bring some light here. Uh, okay. Or Alberto, you want to uh, summarize uh, something? Well, I think uh, for the engineering part, it's better <laughs> your your point of view than than mine, at least this week. Uh, okay, so uh, uh, we merged the 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 pull request about. Uh, uh, adding a time zone, um, I mean, uh, week, day, and uh, hours information for comments. And then, uh, so we were working on the documentation. So there is already some documentation for Mordred. And uh, today we should have also something for Elk. Uh, and then we have always some bug fixes and, and minor things. But uh, uh, this week was more or less uh, uh, a calm uh, week. Okay. Thank you for the news. Yeah. Um, yeah, and then the other thing we have for today, review previews, meeting action items. But I don't know if there is anything else. Uh, last time, we didn't uh, have a conclusion for the action items that we had reviewed. So I'm just gonna paste them back in here. Uh, Alberto, you had wanted to open an issue in Grimoire Lab to make the suggestion about adding a link to chaos metrics in the definition at the bottom of each panel. Did you open that? Yeah, and I think you answered me. <laughs> Okay, uh, let's find the 
URL and add it here in yeah. the document so we have mm. the whole documentation. I'm looking for it. Yep. So I don't think it's in the Grimoire Lab one. Maybe it's in the Kit Feature one or see you. See you. And the, and the third one, I think it's already, it's already done because it was Luis to give access to others. That's it. And the other issue I had to open is this one. The second one is outside Grimoire Lab because it's for the plugin um, by David Moreno. And the plugin, as I said, last couple of weeks is on the uh, David account. OK, thank you. So then perhaps we can um, as this is one of the open action items we had from previous still not finishes to keep reviewing the open issues we had in other projects. So what do you think? Um, let's see what uh, Andy and Armstrong are interested in. Mm -hmm. Maybe they have a question that we can oh, yeah. make the topic for today. Uh, I think I'm fine with what you're doing so far. I don't have any specific question. For me today, I'll just listen. Um, I'm going to try and uh, get Keybase set up so I can collaborate with your colleague, Quan, I think his name is, and uh, get my login information. Mm -hmm. So perhaps uh, we can, so we have like uh, 50 minutes, 48. So what we can do is to have some time to review a couple of projects, one or two. So this is not too, uh, you know, uh, boring perhaps. <laughs> um, and the last part, we can go for a specific uh, panel or extra discussion about bringing new task boards. Does it make sense? That sounds great to me. Daniel, but, but the target of reviewing the, the issues is to, is to uh, look for the ones that are more easy to be fixed or to get, a, get the big picture or what? So the goal at the very beginning was to introduce people about where they can find each of the tools in the Grimoire lab to chain um, the things that are open in terms of new requirements. Um, if there are people, so and the point is basically review review some of them to see this the status of all of them, so then people can understand where to go when they have a specific question. So what we did, as far as I remember, was for instance sorting hat. So we introduced sorting hat, then we went through the issues that were open there in sorting hat, and to understand the specific status in the development level for each of the tools. So. Yeah, what, as, yeah. what, what, sorry. Oh, I was wondering if it could make sense to uh, do this in some kind of format. I mean, that makes sense to anyone that is not used to Grimoire Lab at all. So basically, instead of going, I don't know, alphabetically, for example, tool by tool, is first of all understanding what the work, the data flow through the toolkit. So basically, the first thing is we retrieve data. Grimoire Lab retrieves data. And to do that, it use a component that is called Perceval. Uh, one of the cool things is that we have Valerio in the course, so basically he can explain, okay, this is the tooling for, for this and that component, and basically here the issues that are open are ready with this or that issue that we have found or something that we have in the roadmap. I don't know if something like that, explained like that, could make sense to the people attending here. Mm -hmm. What do you think? Yeah, it works for me. Mm. 
I think this way is, is going to be much more uh, useful for, for the people that is going to watch this video. If there is people that go <laughs> watch this video. Uh, the good thing is it's recorded. So basically we can say components that are probably not still there or would they even work in an idea so people can say later, oh, I think this could be done with any other component or whatever I think. That's mm -hmm. how I see the something that we can share with the community and also get feedback from the whole uh, architecture. I don't know, Valerio, you have oh, somewhere close or do you know where some picture of the current architecture? So basically we can go with the first two or three com main components. What do you think? Uh, yes. Uh, one second, I'm going to look for uh, uh, an image that summarizes the architecture of, of, uh, of, we start with Perceval or uh, just the full al architecture of Remor Lab. Mm -hmm. So we focus on just one component or uh, we prefer to go on, uh, on the global. I think in a whole picture and then focus on the first step. But okay, yeah. I, I can share my screen, Valerie, don't worry, because okay, I have yes. here okay. the, the slides for the first training session we usually have, so we can use that. Uh, let me find the right, yes, this one. Just as a reminder, we already reviewed the open things for Primar Lab as a whole, uh, Percival and King Arthur. Okay, so what I'm understanding is we are looking at the architecture to figure out where we are in the tool chain and then we're going into that repository that we still need to review the issues for. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes, so I think that Gail has based on the that the schema in the tutorial. Right? You have pasted the link to the tutorial where the components has been explained. So an interesting pull request to be to update those those draws with these nice charts from Valeria. <laughs> Well, I say, I'd say it's up to you, Valerio, if you prefer this diagram here that has a lot of colors, <laughs> or maybe you prefer this other one that maybe it's easier to, to understand. Uh, not... Let's use the new diagram that looks nicer. Plus one. This one? Yes, perfect. So, okay. So, uh, so this is the architecture of uh, Grimoire Lab. Uh, so the entry point, I mean, are the data sources here. Uh, we have, uh, for instance, uh, GitHub, uh, Slack, uh, Git, and uh, Stack Overflow, for instance. So. Uh, the component that is in charge of uh, uh, collecting uh, the data from uh, uh, what we call repositories is Perceval. Uh, Perceval, uh, basically, um, uh, what it does is just fetching the information from uh, uh, these data sources. And uh, uh, what it, it implements is also some mechanism uh, in case of uh, uh, connection problems, or uh, um, to avoid uh, to consume too much uh, the token when, for instance, we mine uh, GitHub. And uh, uh, for instance, also it stores the, re the request, the issues the, that already uh, submitted to uh, speed up the, the fetching process. So uh, the input of Percival is a, a, a repository and the output is a set of uh, JSONs. So each JSON correspond to an item that Percival is extracting. For instance, if we are focusing on uh, GitHub, so we fetch issues from GitHub. So Percival uh, fetch the, a given issue, and then uh, it includes in this issue also, for instance, the comments and other informations and uh, reactions. Uh, so each of these documents is then uh, um, available for the other uh, components in Grimoire Lab. In this case, we have uh, Arthur. Arthur is basically um, 
a, a queue that reads from uh, Perceval and stores these, uh, these items. In the, current uh, in the current architecture, Arthur is an optional parameter. Actually, we can go directly from Perceval to Grimoire, to Grimoire Elk. Uh, anyway, these documents, and uh, once uh, they are, uh, in, in the, are inside the, the platform, they reach uh, Grimoire Elk. Grimoire Elk is basically a wrapper around uh, el Elasticsearch. So, yes, thank you, Alberto. Um, so, uh, Grimoire Elk is a wrapper around Elasticsearch. Uh, it has basically two main uh, um, objectives. Uh, one is to fetch the data in an incremental way from Perceval and takes this data and store, uh, and store, uh, and store it in uh, indexes that we call row. Uh, the term row uh, means that we are not manipulating uh, anything we take from the uh, remote repository. So the, the row index contains exactly the same information we can find in the, in the remote repository. Um, then the second uh, operation uh, that Telk uh, does is to uh, use the row index to uh, generate what we call the enriched indexes. Uh, so the concept of enriched index is, uh, can be summarized in, uh, we have data from uh, an original data source and we want to add uh, more things. So uh, we add, for instance, uh, uh, identity information using sorting app. Um, uh, why this important? Uh, this is important because uh, so in, uh, in, in different data sources, we can have the same people, but with different usernames, emails, uh, uh, or, uh, or nicknames, for instance. So sorting out what it does is a relational database that is able to unify this information and uh, ELK query sorting out to get uh, the unified uh, uh, identity of a given user. So this is, for instance, is, is part of the enrichment process. Then other enrichments are, uh, are much easier. For instance, if we focus on, uh, on GitHub, we, we want to know uh, the time uh, uh, that an issue has been open. So what we do is uh, we take the data we, we, have, we can get from uh, GitHub and we do just a diff between uh, the creation and the closing date. Uh, we can have also other examples, for instance, uh, in Gerrit, we calculate uh, the time a, a patch set uh, is open or uh, the number of approvals it receives. Uh, so all this information is stored in, in the Richard indexes. Uh, uh, until here, everything is clear more or less? Or I went too fast? It, it's okay? It's okay. Okay, mm. okay great. No. So, yeah. But, uh, when are we going over to, we, we said we reviewed the issues for Percival and Arthur. Daniel, which ones did we already review? And then which ones did we so want to review? We, we've reviewed Grimoire Lab as a whole, like uh, high level issues. And then we reviewed Percival and King Arthur. So basically the extraction uh, phase that we see here. Okay, so now that we understand their role within the whole Part, we can review the issues for the next one. Yeah, that would be the idea. Either Lumar Elk or perhaps Sorting Hat and so on. Yeah, so. Maybe, maybe Valerio can keep, uh, can finish this. So, or do you think? Oh, he wants to finish. Okay. Yeah. I thought it was just introduction to the ones that we are going to review now, but that's okay. Uh, okay, so, uh, well, uh, then there are just uh, a couple of, co of components left. One is, uh, so once we have the Richard indexes, what we do is we build the visualizations on top of it. So a visualization is, is composed of two parts. One is uh, uh, what uh, Alberto probably can explain, uh, can give more details that are the index patterns. That is the way we, uh, we use to model the data that is in the Richard indexes. So this, the index pattern is basically a schema of the data. And this schema is needed to work with uh, KeyBeater, that is a downstream of, uh, of Kibana. Kibana is, is, a, is a tool, part of the Elasticsearch ecosystem. So in Viterfia, we have KeyBeater because we added some uh, plugins that are not uh, available in the downstream, uh, I mean, in the, in the upstream in, uh, in Kibana. So 
uh, with sigils, so the, the index patterns, and uh, Kibiter, we are able to produce uh, uh, dynamic web, web dashboards that are basically what you can see in, uh, in the Chaos dashboards. All, all these are visualizations that are created uh, using the combination of sigils and, uh, and Kibiter. I don't know, Alberto, if you want to add uh, more information about uh, these two components. Well, I think this is enough because the the other weeks we were talking about Kibiter and building visualizations. So basically, uh, this is it. So once we have the data, we go to Kibiter or Kibana and we start building things on top of the enriched indexes. Okay. Okay. Thank you. And then uh, a manuscript is basically a, a component that allows uh, us to create uh, uh, static reports, PDF and so on. But in a nutshell, is, uh, what it does is it's querying Elasticsearch and, and wrap this data in a, in a format that can be transformed in a, in a PDF document. And then all this is basically orchestrated by Mortred, that is uh, uh, the icon on the, uh, yes, there. Uh, so Mortred handles uh, basically two, two configuration files. Uh, one is the setup CFG and the other one is the project.json. So the former contains information about uh, where to store the information. So in which index or uh, the credential to access uh, the sorting of the database and, 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 the, and the location of key of uh, key beater. The project.json instead contains a list of repositories uh, that we want to fetch. Uh, so basically this is the global, uh, uh, a quick introduction to the architecture of Primor Lab. I don't know if you have uh, some questions or we can move to the next step. I do have a comment and it's, so there is another component here, which is our own sorting hat, which is hat style that we don't have a tool. So uh, Hatstall is the UI interface for Sorting Hat. So at some point we should add uh, that in the, in the architecture here. So instead of having a command line interface or specific um, uh, API or, or directly MySQL or MariaDB database, we have this Hatstall tool. So then you can do things, that's all. I have a okay. question. I have? Okay, go ahead. Uh, first of all, thank you for the um, presentation. It's great. Uh, secondly, I'm curious if there's um, installation documentation or an installation guide somewhere. Okay, we have a, a, a tutorial. It's pretty technical and we are working to, to make it like uh, easier to understand, uh, but uh, we can share uh, the uh, the tutorial URL. I'm I'm, I'm looking for the, the URL. Even if it's hard to follow, it'd be interesting for me just to read it through. Yes, sure. So I'm Maybe sharing. For sure, we have one with, uh, which is hard to follow. <laughs> okay, just share it on on the chat. Um, Indeed, we are working uh, in the Grimoire Lab tutorial repository. Uh, in, we are working to improve the documentation. So maybe we can also share the link to the to the issues we have created to to improve the documentation. We are discussing the table of contents and and the content that we want in the future. There. Yeah, sure, good idea. I'm going to check the the issue. Um. Luis, does it make sense to discuss a bit about the, the monolithics thing? I don't know if this is still running or because it's quite a straightforward. Or Manrique, you have some experience installing things. Uh, well, uh, the Grimoire tutorial is, is mainly oriented to, to developers. So it uses uh, PyPy to install the, the Python packages. We have also a, a method to, to, to uh, allow you to install insulated tools, which is basically, which is based in, uh, on Docker. So you basically run a Docker, uh, Docker Compose set of file and 
and you get all the components up and running. But this is not included yet in the Grimoire Lab tutorial, and this is why we are trying to to uh, write in again the, the tutorial. So we have a repo, but it's not linked from the from the community version. So. So uh, we have a repo with some uh, public uh, information about how to deploy the, the tools, but uh, this is something we wanna we wanna publish in, in Grimoire tutorial, and this is something we want to inter integrate. So, and this is something we want to discuss in the in the in the tickets open in Grimoire Lab tutorial. So, uh, so just so you know, Andy, the one that Lewis is talking about is the link I shared in the chat, or Daniel shared again. Yep. It's the analytics demo. And I find it to be the easiest way to get it, an instance up and running. Thank you, I had a, I had a quick read through it. It looks okay. I mean, um, I'll give it a shot. The, the one that we've been discussing about installing this thing on this set of components is basically, as you see in the architecture, uh, is depending on at least two, three extra components from outside Grimoire Lab that I would call that would see MariaDB for the regional database, Elasticsearch for storing the data that is being collected, and Kibana or the up downstream version of Kibana we have that is Kibiter. Um, that usually means that you need uh, some kind of complex installation. So we, we are working on ways to, to improve that part. Probably with Docker Compose is easy, but then, then you need to have a proper Docker installed in your machine or cloud environment or whatever. But once you have Docker, it's, it's pretty straightforward with the monolithics. That has been my experience. And I have, I have even written some basic scripts to maintain that from my laptop without main issues. So you have any question, just let us know because we want that to make, of course, part of the first uh, first page of any readme on the tutorial. This sounds great. Um, so then I guess we can go for any of the uh, one of the projects, because then we have some more, it's like 28 minutes left. Um, I'm not an expert in part of the project we've mentioned, uh, so I don't know, uh, maybe Valerio, if you want to go through some of the projects you mentioned that you feel comfortable with uh, in, in terms of checking the issues that there are open. If not, I can go, for instance, with Sigils, which is the project I, I fully understand. So. What do you prefer? As you prefer. Um, if you want to go with CGs, perfect. Otherwise, uh, I mean, I could comment on on Percival. No, but we already reviewed Percival, um, King Arthur, and Grimoire Lab. Okay. So it could be like Grimoire Elk or Sorting Hat or another one. I think it would be interesting if anyone can explain a little bit more about Grimoire Elk. Why is there a we one? How do we want to change it and what the people think about the things we are thinking about to perform on Grimoire Elk? Because if you look at the architecture currently, that's the core part of everything. So basically, everything goes to Grimoire Elk. So it's the one that is receiving the, the data from Percival and storing that in Elasticsearch, but also is the one that is taking the data and put it on Sorting Hat database. And it's also the one that is taking the data in Sorting Hat database and the data from Elasticsearch uh, indexes and cooking the enriched indices. So that's, I would say, our biggest, uh, our biggest snowball in, in, in the architecture. Okay, so we can review uh, Grimoire Elk. So, uh, from where uh, we should start the issues or uh, uh, we inspect the code? Uh, what do you have in mind? I would go for the issues, I guess. And then, well, if you want to, to drive us around a bit of the the code, where to find things, and then the issues may work. Uh, okay, yeah, we can start uh, with the code. 
Okay, so I share the link. Can you share your screen? Is it possible? Uh, yes, I can try. Mm -hmm. Okay. From where I share the video. Uh, so at the bottom of the Zoom, you have the share button. And then you need to choose either your entire desktop or some of the desktops or a window. If not, if you want, I can share my screen. Yeah, maybe it's better. Because okay. I, I don't find the button to share the screen. Okay, just a second. Mm. Yeah, here we are. Okay, so if I share my screen. Um, so do you see my... Uh, you are L. I can see it. Yes, I can. So you'll say here, uh, Valeria. Okay. Uh, so this is uh, the 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 repository. Uh, basically, we have uh, uh, two main uh, uh, folders: Grimoire and the Schema. Uh, so we can start maybe with the schema that is the description of uh, the rich data. So uh, uh, we are improving uh, the information we have uh, in these files, but basically if you open, for instance, uh, Git, yes. So uh, here you can have like a comma separated value file uh, that explains for each field you find in the rich index, what, what it, it represents and the, the type and uh, if you can aggregate this, uh, this field. Uh, the, uh, the aggregatable information is about Elasticsearch. The, let's say that is a bit too technical. Mm -hmm. I, I don't know if uh, Daniel, Alberto, you want to uh, give some more extra details on, uh, on Git, for instance, on other data sources. Mm -hmm. I think it's, so it's just a matter of understanding where things are. I think it's okay, this. Okay. Uh, so we have uh, uh, basically, let's say, probably 60% or even more um, uh, data covered. So we can uh, check Git or uh, GitHub, and uh, you should find always more or less uh, the same information, like completed as, uh, as you can see. And then, um, so basically, this is an entry point to understand uh, um, the data uh, Grimoire Elk is, uh, is dealing with. Could, could I ask you, yes, sure. Could I ask a, a question? So these um, CSV files, as I understand it, define the structure of the JSON that you emit. Is is that correct? Uh, yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. It's a, it's a, yes. It's a representation of the of the documents you find in the in the in Elasticsearch in the original indexes. And my second question is the documents that you emit. Generally, do they have nested um, elements, or generally are they flat? If uh, you understand my meaning, is it is it mostly like key value pairs, or or is it sort of structures within structures? Uh, yes. So in um, uh, in Elk, the raw data uh, contains nested fields because they come uh, directly from uh, the remote uh, repository, but generally. Um, the Richard indexes are flat JSON. This is also to simplify the visualization with, uh, uh, with Jupyter. So yeah, generally when you expect uh, an Richard index, you should find most of the times a flat JSON. Most of the time flat. Thank you very much. Okay. You're welcome. Um, okay, so uh, we, we can go back to uh, uh, Grimoire Elk mm -hmm. and we can go to the folder Grimoire Elk, yes. Mm -hmm. So, uh, 
here you can basically you can see the structure of elk we have uh, two main blocks that is the row and the richard folders so if you enter there you will find like uh, details for each data source uh, grimoire lab grimoire lab is dealing with and then uh, if you see the file elk.pi the yes that one so basically this is the connection with uh, mortred so uh, you can find two main functions here uh, feedback and and enrich backhand exactly this this function is called by mortred to uh, feed the items he gets from uh, i mean basically to feed the items from percival to elk so this part is for the raw collection and if you scroll down down danny we should have an enriched backhand somewhere You are missing an N. And reach back. Oh, yeah. Yes. Right. Yeah. Oh, okay. Here we go. Without the No, just the reach. Without the reach. So, yes. Exactly. Okay. Yes. Again. Mm. So, uh, let, just put a def on. Uh, exactly. Here we go. And this is a. Uh, uh, sorry, Dan. And this basically is the connection. Uh, from Mordred to Elk to, to enrich the data. So basically here you see a lot of parameters because uh, uh, some time ago uh, there was a, a tool called P2O uh, that was trying to uh, execute uh, Elk without passing uh, to Mordred. So most of the parameters uh, had basically contaminated this, uh, this method, uh, this, fun yeah, this, uh, this function. And uh, so this is basically the the two connections you should see uh, when you want to extend the uh, elk. Uh, so if you want to pass parameters from Mordred to elk. So if, you, if we go back, we can then inspect uh, the folders row uh, and uh, enrich. So for instance, in row, yes, here you can see all the data sources that uh, Grimoire Lab uh, is dealing with. So for instance, if, if we click on Git, uh, generally here you see really few information uh, what what this code does is uh, is defining the mapping for uh, uh, the raw uh, items uh, so uh, to explain this part maybe uh, we should explain a bit how Elasticsearch works so Elasticsearch uh, indexes uh, uh, documents and for each document uh, or type of document you can define a mapping uh, Elasticsearch automatically uh, is able to get uh, a mapping, uh, but in some cases we, we force uh, some, some attributes to be for a, of a given type. So in this case, we are saying that uh, the message of a commit is of, of type text. So when we set this, uh, it means that we, we can perform certain uh, operations on, uh, on the dashboards. So maybe it's too technical, we can skip this part. But uh, if we want just to inspect this file, you see that it's really basic. We, de we, we define the mappings, and then if you scroll a bit down, Danny. So here is, is basically we, uh, we are setting the mapping, and then we are uh, uh, explaining, uh, we are setting, uh, defining how two parts, the information that, com that comes from the project JSON. So in this case, when you want to, to analyze a Git repository, you pass just the URL. So under, under the root, elk, takes this URL and uh, digest this to, to make it uh, executable for Percival. I have a question. Yes. Why is it called Ocean? Okay, this is an historical uh, reason. Uh, it, it was before I joined Viterchia, but uh, Ocean is because it was an ocean of data. So Rho was not called Rho, was called Ocean. And, uh, and so the name uh, uh, is there, should be refactored, but Ocean uh, ideally has been uh, like uh, discontinued, it should be raw. Yeah, they, the initial idea to give you more context uh, on the beginning of the architectural design was uh, instead of having all the linear sequence, you have to, we collect the data and then we have the raw data and then we reach the raw data, was basically to have two separate 
process. One was collecting data and storing raw data. So we can have all that data somewhere, and somewhere will be an ocean of data. If you know data, uh, they are talking a lot about data lakes, where people just basically storing all the data, and they don't know what to do with the data, but basically they are having a place to store whatever data they have. So this was the idea of place free an ocean of open source data. So any data that we can retrieve from open source projects would be in an ocean of data. And then we will have a process that will be able to go to that ocean and get the data that matters to uh, the user that wants to perform an analysis and use the data to produce that enriched thing. And that's why ocean is somewhere in the beginning of the platform at some point. Awesome, thank you. Uh, okay, so we can go to the uh, enriched, yeah. and we can maybe check directly Git. Yeah. So the code here is uh, is a bit more complex because uh, uh, in this part we are integrating data from sorting out, but then we are also adding uh, additional data. So, for instance, uh, if we scroll down, we should see something about uh, pair programming. Uh, then we have also the concept of studies. Yes. Mm -hmm. So uh, the idea of pair programming is to spot the the commits that was uh, where two people were working on. So to do this, uh, Alberto, that probably can give more details about this part, uh, was I mean struggling uh, to to model the data and and insert it in, uh, in the Richard indexes? Well, basically, for this part, the requirement was to have not only integer numbers to represent a commit, but also some kind of real numbers. In this case, if you are sending your commit with another developer, you are going to have 0.5 commits for each developer. And in some cases, we have up to six or seven developers participating with the same of features, so having a small part of, of the commit. And the reason for this is because hmm, some organizations were interested in having only the part corresponding to their developers. So they don't they, they didn't want to have like we have 50 commits. They wanted to have the proportional part of those commits that their developers made using this signal of feature. That's the explanation and the idea of this. Uh, okay. And uh, then if you scroll a bit down, Danny, and you look for a sorting out. So I, at some point, we should have something like, uh, yes, a bit more. This? Uh, no, a bit more. This? Uh, uh, yes, yeah, this is a, uh, it's a good example. So this method, what it's doing is, uh, is going to inspect the, the raw items, uh, the raw data, and collect uh, information from, uh, about the author. So basically, each enricher uh, knows where uh, author or... Uh, mm, uh, user information is stored. So this information is taken and sent to sorting app. And then in a, in a, in a next phase, uh, once the data in sorting app has been digested, this data goes again to Elk to uh, update the index. So in this case, after the enrichment process, we should always have uh, correct information about uh, the users that we are tracking in Grimoire Lab. So basically we have uh, uh, to, to recap. In the first phase, the information from the raw data is taken and uh, goes to, uh, to sorting out. Sorting out can do some processing of this data, uh, store the data, and then Elk again asks the, the, sort, the um, sorting out data and update the, inform the, the index. So in this way, uh, we can have like some fields that comes from sorting out, for instance, author UID, that is a way to identify an author uh, in a unique way. 
across all the repositories he's working on, even if he has different emails or logins. We have just to fit, fit to add this information in, in sorting out. I don't know if it's clear this part. Uh, no, it's not quite clear to me. So okay. you need to know you need to know all the email addresses that the author uses, right? Yes. Okay, so based on that, then you try to aggregate them now as one person. <coughs> exactly. So okay. I, right. ideally, imagine that you have uh, three mails, and these three mails are in sorting out. Uh, using sorting out or uh, Astal, that is the UI tool uh, on top of sorting out, you can say, so these three mails correspond to the same people. So sorting out under the roots will create a unique uh, uh, profile. And this, this unique uh, profile will be then embedded in the reached indexes where one of these three mails appears. Is that clear? Yeah, because usually the case in most uh, communities is that some people you know, create different accounts with two different emails to not to identify them, but, like it's very difficult. In some cases, they go they go away like ghost users. Yeah, yes, this is uh, yeah, some, this is something that the sorting out is uh, is partially able to do it in the sense uh, yeah. we use uh, heuristics based on email or uh, um, uh, email and, uh, and uh, name. Uh, but then, of course, if, uh, if it, it may be possible that we are not able to aggregate data. But in, for uh, uh, Grimoire Lab users or uh, Viterkia customers, generally they provide us with the data to unify profile, uh, I mean, to unify users together. Does it answer your question or less? Yes, I'm good. I'm good. Thank you. Okay, perfect. Thank you. And, uh, and then, okay, so basically this, uh, this is uh, uh, the rich, uh, uh, I mean, the code that uh, from the enrichment of uh, Git data and more or less, uh, this is, uh, I mean, there is no not much to see on Elk. It's basically, these are the, the blocks, and then uh, uh, it's just going to inspect each, uh, each enricher or uh, uh, row connector to see uh, what, what it does. Um, as there are like eight minutes to the next meeting, and people are going to enter here, I don't know if you would like perhaps to go for a quick review of the issues, so then we close with more elk. Maybe you ah. can highlight like two or three uh, issues. Okay. okay, sure. So um, since elk, uh, as uh, Marike mentioned before, is basically uh, at the core of uh, the platform, we generally get here uh, bugs, but also uh, enhancements and uh, and many other things. So. Uh, some, some issues are really old. And, and if we focus on the first one, for instance, uh, okay, no, this is really new. This is uh, 10 <laughs> minutes ago. <laughs> if we focus on the documentation, so mm -hmm. this is, is part of the work we started. The idea is uh, to start having like, uh, basically what we explained today, but in a readme. And then, uh, I mean, the idea is to start with this and then uh, improve the documentation. Uh, then, for instance, we have something about uh, uh, Onion. Uh, this was opened by Alberto. Uh, so, uh, no, no, uh, was oh. the other. Oh, no, yes. this one. Yes. So here, the idea is. Uh, uh, so Onion is a um, is a study that is is basically is a process that is done with just the rich data. And uh, Onion calculates uh, um, community information by quarters. So th the idea would be to have uh, this information not just by quarter, but uh, with a config configurable time frame. I don't know if Alberto, do you want to add more more details about uh, this ticket? Yeah, this was a, a customer request by GitLab folks 
because they were interested in having this by milestone because they are looking at the data, always organizing the, the underlying, in this case, merge requests and issues by milestone. So, well, by quarter is not too bad, but it's not going to be the same as in other dashboards. So, from that, uh, I created this uh, issue in order to have the, the feature of adding your own data ranges to compute onion on top of that. The, the idea is right now, you cannot select anything here. Uh, the data is going to be split by quarter because quarter is, uh, I'd say, a common time unit to measure things and compare things. But well, as uh, there is at least uh, one project interested in having this with a different time range, it makes sense to, to open the discussion and probably to modify the code because it should be uh, an easy modification. Because, well, when you throw the query to Elasticsearch, you are going to say, hey, give me data by quarter. So instead of that, you can say, hey, give me the data by whatever, and you are going to have the data, and probably you are going to be able to get the index built with no problems. And the, the only problematic part could be how to represent that in a, a standard dashboard. So no matter the time you need to select, the dashboard is going to work. But from the point of view of data, it's going to be easy. Okay, so, well, I think we have covered uh, Gmail at the end, so we don't have time for Sigils. So we can leave Sigils probably for the next uh, uh, meeting. Um, so it's like three minutes for the next one. So I guess we can close for today. If you have any comment, concerns, and so on, please add those to the agenda. Um, I guess this is all. Any other questions and comments? No. Not from my side. Well, I, I do have one, mm -hmm. but I'll, I'll wait if anyone else has something. Okay. So then Otherwise, we'll... I'm opening a new, um, new issue that we can discuss. Mm -hmm. Or the idea is last time we looked at and there was a nice user interface for defining fields that are calculated on the fly. And the idea is to have a user interface for enriching indexes mm -hmm. because the enrichment process basically takes the raw data, there are some formulas, and then you get the enriched index. And if we could have a user interface for that and the enrichment formulas were something that we could share, that is something in the chaos project we can um, include in the metric definitions. This will make it easier what we had last week where we needed data to just enrich the data in a different way on the fly without requiring updating the source code and new deployment and everything. I don't know if this has been discussed before, this idea is new or old, or, but it's something that I thought I opened an issue for. Mm -hmm. Good. Yeah, yeah so. that was interesting. It remembers me something about like shares and using pandas to make uh, these calculations, but I don't know, Danny, what do you think? Uh, what do you mean, Valeria, about so uh, if I understood correctly, uh, uh, Jorge was saying uh, that it would be nice to have like an uh, easy way to use the raw data and uh, manipulate it and then share just the formula to enrich the data. So I thought about Panda data frames and uh, I mean, series that ideally was supposed to simplify the, the, the manipulation of the, of the data. Yeah, uh, we, we can have a specific session indeed for this, would be good. 
Okay. Next uh, time, maybe, or another time. Yeah. Hey, Georg, uh, do you mind stop recording? Yep. Okay.